The authors introduce a novel approach to contrastive learning, dubbed X Sample Contrastive, which addresses the limitation of traditional contrastive losses that only consider a single positive sample and ignore similarities across samples. By reformulating the contrastive loss to explicitly encode how a sample relates to others, the authors demonstrate improved performance in learning good representations that capture the diverse relationships between data samples. Contrastive loss is a widely used objective in self-supervised and multimodal learning, where the goal is to associate a sample with its related positive sample and dissociate it from unrelated negative samples. However, this approach can be viewed as modifying a similarity graph, which is inherently binary, neglecting the valuable information contained in similarities across samples. The author's proposed X-sample contrastive objective aims to capture these neglected similarities by revising the standard contrastive loss. They experiment with this new objective on three datasets of varying scales, ImageNet 1K, CC3M, and CC12M, and demonstrate that the learned representations outperform both contrastive self-supervised and vision language models trained on the same data across a range of tasks. Notably, the authors show that their objective performs particularly well in lower data regimes, achieving significant gains over CLIP when training with CC3M. Additionally, the learned representations seem to better separate objects from their attributes and backgrounds, resulting in improved performance on ImageNet 9. The proposed solution takes a step towards developing richer learning objectives for understanding sample relations in foundation models, and the authors hope that this work will inspire further research in this direction. In vision language learning, the standard contrastive loss function neglects the similarities between samples, treating each text-image pair independently. To address this limitation, the proposed X-sample contrastive loss, XCLR, modifies the standard contrastive objective to capture similarities across samples. XCLR introduces a similarity graph with continuous scalars, replacing the binary negative versus positive designations in standard contrastive loss. This allows the model to learn soft inter-sample relationships such as the high similarity between two dog images and the moderate similarity between dog and cat images on similar grassy backgrounds. The authors experiment with XCLR by training vision models using a graph of similarities inferred from class or text caption descriptions found in common datasets, including ImageNet, CC3M, and CC12M. The results show that XCLR outperforms contrastive baseline methods on a range of tasks, including standard classification, object decomposition, and fine-grained disambiguation of object attributes. Notably, XCLR achieves gains of 0.6% over CLIP on ImageNet and ImageNet Real when training on CC12M, and 3.44.9% on ImageNet 9. The authors also find that the quality of labels used to infer the similarity graph is more important than the data quantity and that XCLR appears to work particularly well in lower data regimes, with gains of 16.8% on ImageNet and 18.1% on ImageNet Real when training with CC3M. The contributions of this work include the introduction of XCLR, which enables the model to learn representations that generalize better, decompose objects from their attributes and backgrounds, and are more data-efficient. The authors introduce a graph similarity perspective on contrastive losses, revealing that standard losses, such as InfoNCE, encode a sparse similarity matrix that treats other related samples as negatives. This limitation is overcome by the proposed XCLR loss, which explicitly accounts for similarities across samples. Experimental results demonstrate that representations learned via XCLR generalize better on standard classification tasks, disambiguate aspects of images more reliably and learn more efficiently when data is scarce. The authors highlight the limitations of previous contrastive learning objectives, which only work with positive and negative pairs and do not support degrees of similarity. They discuss various modifications to these objectives, including using multiple positive pairs, soft targets, and clustering assignments. Building upon the work of Cabans et al., they propose a unifying framework for viewing self-supervised learning and supervised learning objectives as learning with different underlying similarity graphs. Inspired by the soft targets literature, the authors propose using a soft graph to encode richer, more generalizable representations. 
A similarity graph is defined as a graph in which nodes represent data samples, and edges represent similarity relationships. This graph is expressed through its symmetric adjacency matrix, which allows for the modeling of complex relationships between samples. The XCLR loss is designed to learn representations that capture these relationships, leading to improved performance in various tasks. The authors compare sample similarity adjacency matrices between existing methods and their proposed X-sample contrastive similarity loss. These matrices illustrate pairwise similarities between 20 samples from four classes, with a similarity of 1 indicating identical samples and 0 indicating completely unrelated samples. In self-supervised learning, no inter-sample relationships are modeled, whereas in supervised learning, samples of the same class are grouped together based on labels. In contrast, XCLR models inter-class relationships by associating cats with dogs and pianos with guitars. The authors introduce the concept of a semantic relation graph G, where G element of R to the power of N to the power of N encoding the relationship between inputs i and j in the real entry g. In self-supervised learning, the graph g is defined as g equals 1, i, v equals j, v, e, where v is the number of positive views generated and e is the number of training epochs. This graph captures whether two samples were generated as augmentations of the same original input. The authors cite theorem 1 from Cabanz et al., 2023, which expresses VIC reg, SIM CLR, and Barlow twins losses in terms of the graph G. The losses are formalized as LVIC squared, Z, G, equals parallel ZZG squared, LSIM CLR, Z, G, equals, element of, N, G, log express, ZZ, element of, N, express, ZZ, and LBT, Z, G, equals ZG's I squared, respectively. The authors focus on contrastive learning, specifically the SIM CLR family of losses, and aim to move away from the ad hoc graph G. They introduce XCLR, which incorporates soft cross-sample similarity into the widely used info NCE objective. This approach allows for modeling interclass relationships, enabling the learning of more nuanced and robust representations. The research paper presents a novel contrastive learning method, XCLR, which leverages textual information associated with images to enhance the learning process. This approach is an extension of the SIM CLR objective, allowing for more flexible and nuanced relationships between images in a batch. By utilizing a soft graph that describes the similarity between image representations based on their captions, XCLR can capture semantic relationships between images beyond just identifying true positives. In the proposed method, each image is augmented twice to create two views of the same image, and then encoded to obtain representation vectors. The similarity between these vectors is calculated using cosine similarity. The cross-entropy loss function is used to train the model, where the goal is to classify positive examples in a batch. However, unlike SIM CLR, XCLR uses a soft objective by replacing the hard positive distribution with a distribution C derived from the textual information. The textual information is encoded using a trained text encoder, and the similarities are calculated using the cosine similarity of the encoded text representations. These similarities form a soft graph, which is then converted into a valid probability distribution using a softmax function. This process allows for more flexible and nuanced relationships between images in a batch, as opposed to the binary relationships in SIM CLR. Experiments conducted on ImageNet, Conceptual Captions 3M, and 12M datasets demonstrate the effectiveness of XCLR compared to other state-of-the-art contrastive learning methods such as SIM CLR, CLIP, and SUPCON. The results show that XCLR outperforms these methods in various evaluation metrics highlighting the benefits of incorporating textual information into the contrastive learning process. The paper also discusses potential extensions of the XCLR method, including its integration with other non-contrastive objectives like BIOL, SIMCAM, or VIC-REG. Furthermore, the use of different text encoders or additional sources of textual information could further improve the performance of XCLR. In Table 1, the performance of X-sample contrastive loss, XCLR, is compared with contrastive loss, 
SIMCLR, and supervised contrastive loss on the background decomposition MIT states benchmark, with ImageNet pre-training. XCLR outperforms both SIMCLR and supervised contrastive in most scenarios, demonstrating the effectiveness of incorporating similarities across samples in the training objective. Figure 3a illustrates the data efficiency of XCLR with ImageNet pre-training, where it outperforms SIMCLR in low data regimes and matches supervised contrastive trained on ground truth labels at varying levels of data scarcity. The experiments on the ImageNet dataset were run for 100 epochs with a batch size of 1024 and a learning rate of 0.075. Figure 3b shows the k-nearest neighbors, KNN, performance on ImageNet, where XCLR outperforms other methods with KNN probing for a range of values of k. Figure 3c demonstrates the sensitivity of X sample contrastive to temperature, testing the performance of the method when trained with different values of temperature tau on ImageNet data. The experiments were conducted using a ResNet 50 backbone architecture, with optimized hyperparameters for standard contrastive self-supervised learning. The same architecture was used for CLIP's vision encoder, with publicly available checkpoints provided by OpenClip for CC12M. The results of the experiments using well-labeled samples from ImageNet show that XCLR improves on standard classification performance with gains of 12.4% relative to SIMCLR and 1.2% relative to supervised contrastive on ImageNet. Similar gains are observed when evaluated on revised labels from ImageNet Real. The representations learned via XCLR are also more capable of disambiguating objects from backgrounds and attributes. By capturing similarities across samples, XCLR is able to learn representations that are more robust to data scarcity, outperforming SIMCLR even when few training samples are available per class. This section of the research paper evaluates X sample contrastive, a novel contrastive learning method that leverages multimodal data to enhance image classification and object disambiguation. The authors compare X sample contrastive with standard contrastive models such as SIMCLR and CLIP in terms of classification accuracy and disambiguation of objects from their attributes and backgrounds. The results are presented in two sets of experiments, one using 3 million samples from CC3M and another using 12 million samples from CC12M. In both cases, X sample contrastive outperforms SIMCLR and CLIP, demonstrating its effectiveness in learning similarities across samples. For instance, with CC12M training, X contrastive outperforms SIMCLR by 0.5% and CLIP by 0.6% with similar gains for ImageNet Real. It also improves the disambiguation of object foregrounds from backgrounds, showing gains of 0.61.5% over SIMCLR and 3.35.6% over CLIP. Moreover, the study reveals that X-sample contrastive can be used to fine-tune pre-trained backbones, leading to significant improvements in classification performance and object disambiguation. When a pre-trained SIMCLR model is fine-tuned for 10 epochs on ImageNet with XCLR, it improves classification performance on ImageNet by 3.3% and on ImageNet Real by 6.9%. This indicates that XCLR can effectively relate samples during the fine-tuning stage, resulting in better object disambiguation from backgrounds and natural object transformations. In conclusion, this section highlights the superior performance of X sample contrastive in enhancing image classification and object disambiguation, particularly when utilizing multimodal data and fine tuning pre trained models. The authors of the research paper delve into an analysis of the computational overhead associated with the X sample contrastive objective during training, drawing comparisons to SIMCLR. As indicated in Table 5, XCLR introduces minimal computational overhead with average processing times per batch amounting to 0.866 plus or minus 0.010 seconds for ImageNet and 0.877 plus or minus 0.032 seconds for conceptual captions, CC. This reduction in overhead is achieved through pre-computing similarity values and avoiding the need to run the text encoder during model training, which reduces overhead at the cost of some pre-processing. The pre-processing time is relatively short, taking less than 2 hours for CC12M, 30 minutes for CC3M, 
and less than 5 minutes for ImageNet using one GPU. The authors then proceed to evaluate the representations learned via X-Sample Contrastive. They perform nearest neighbor, KNN, clustering and demonstrate that XCLR outperforms both SIM CLR and subcon baselines across a range of choices for K, thereby illustrating that the learned representations work well for downstream tasks with nonlinear decision boundaries. To visualize the learned graph from X-Sample Contrastive representations, the authors select four groups of three ImageNet classes and compare representation similarities using cosine similarity. They find that the image encoder successfully captures the similarity within the class groups, as shown in Figure 4. The authors also examine the effect of hyperparameter choices, specifically the softmax temperature tau. They show the sensitivity of XCLR to temperature in Figure 3C and find that a value of 0.1 strikes an optimal balance, providing an improvement over the pure supervised contrastive objective while still emphasizing true positives. Additionally, they experiment with different ways of inferring the graph, including using different text encoders and WordNet hierarchy distance, and find that calculating similarities using the sentence transformer works best. The authors delve into the impact of label quality on fine-grained attribute disambiguation, presenting their findings in Table 6. They discover that label quality significantly influences downstream performance with larger labels from noisy captions negatively affecting fine-grained object attributes in MIT states. Conversely, XCLR with high-quality labels from ImageNet surpasses models trained on much larger noisier data. Specifically, XCLR achieves 30.9% versus 23.3% for attribute classification and 45.8% versus 36.9% for object classification under different states compared to clip trained on 12 times larger data. Figure 4 illustrates the pairwise similarities learned by SUBCON and XCLR. SUBCON's objective does not encourage non-zero similarity between samples of different classes, whereas XCLR target similarities consider semantic closeness within categories. The trained model successfully learns the soft similarity. The authors discuss the limitations of their approach including the need for extra data and memory to construct the cross-sample similarity graph. They suggest that building the graph using augmentations, self-distillation, or other pre-trained models could be alternatives when extra data is not available. The quality of the graph is crucial, as seen in the results with conceptual captions datasets. Overall, the authors propose XCLR a novel contrastive learning method that uses a soft similarity graph to capture the degree of similarity across samples, outperforming existing binary graph contrastive methods. I'm happy to help. However, it seems that the original content is missing. Please provide the original transcript, and I'll refine it according to the guidelines you provided. I'll transform the text into a direct, concise form suitable for voiceover narration maintaining technical accuracy and depth while highlighting novel ideas, significant findings, and important arguments. In the realm of self-supervised learning, contrastive learning, and image text retrieval, various approaches have been proposed to improve model performance. Gao et al.'s soft clip introduces a softer cross-modal alignment method, enhancing image text retrieval models. Grill et al.'s bio method utilizes a momentum encoder to achieve state-of-the-art results in self-supervised learning tasks. He et al.'s deep residual learning for image recognition highlights the importance of residual connections in neural networks. Momentum contrast, as proposed by he et al., emphasizes the role of contrastive learning in enhancing the quality of learned representations. Knowledge distillation, introduced by Hinton et al., enables the transfer of knowledge from a large teacher model to a smaller student model. Ranked Positives Contrastive Estimation, proposed by Hoffman et al., aims to boost contrastive learning by ranking positive samples based on their similarity to the anchor sample. Huang et al.'s cross-modal and unimodal soft label alignment for image text retrieval focuses on the use of soft labels to improve alignment between image and text representations. Ilharko et al.'s Open Clip Library provides a tool for implementing contrastive learning models, while Azola et al.'s discovery of states and transformations in image collections emphasizes the importance of understanding the relationships between images. Kosala et al.'s supervised contrastive learning uses labeled data to guide the learning process. 
Van den Oort et al.'s contrastive predictive coding learns representations from raw sensory data through predictive coding. Radford et al.'s learning transferable visual models from natural language supervision showcases the potential of large language models in guiding visual representation learning. Reimers and Gurevich's Sentenceberg generates sentence embeddings using a Siamese network. Riali et al.'s work on characterizing and improving the robustness of self-supervised learning through background augmentations highlights the importance of robustness in learned representations. Schroff et al.'s FaceNet uses a unified embedding for face recognition and clustering. Finally, Sharma et al.'s Conceptual Captions dataset provides a cleaned and hypernemed dataset for automatic image captioning tasks. This comprehensive overview of techniques and methodologies in self-supervised learning, contrastive learning, and image text retrieval highlights the key contributions and advancements made in these fields. This compilation of research papers showcases significant advancements in machine learning and artificial intelligence. It begins with Yang Lung Tian et al.'s work, Stabler app. Synthetic images from text-to-image models make strong visual representation learners, which highlights the potential of synthetic images generated from text-to-image models in enhancing visual representation learning. The paper by Hugo Tuvron et al., Lama 2, Open Foundation and Fine-Tuned Chat Models, discusses the development of LAMA2, an open foundation model designed for fine-tuning in various chat applications. This research aims to provide a versatile and efficient tool for natural language processing tasks. Kai Xiao et al.'s Noise or Signal, the role of image backgrounds in object recognition, delves into the importance of image backgrounds in object recognition. The authors argue that these backgrounds play a crucial role in improving the performance of deep neural networks, challenging the common practice of removing or ignoring them during training. In Large Batch Training of Convolutional Networks, Young Yu et al. explore the benefits of using large batch sizes during the training process of convolutional neural networks. This approach is shown to improve the efficiency and stability of the training process, leading to better model performance. Jury Zibantar et al.'s, Barlow Twins, Self-Supervised Learning via Redundancy Reduction, introduces a novel self-supervised learning method called Barlow Twins. This method leverages redundancy reduction to learn effective representations from unlabeled data, demonstrating promising results in various image classification tasks. Finally, Minkai Jung et al.'s, Wrestle, Relational Self-Supervised Learning with Weak Augmentation, presents a new relational self-supervised learning framework named RESSL. This framework utilizes weak augmentations to capture the relationships between images, resulting in improved performance in both supervised and unsupervised learning scenarios. Overall, this compilation highlights significant contributions to the field of machine learning and AI, encompassing topics such as synthetic image generation, chat models, object recognition, large batch training, self-supervised learning, and relational learning. These studies demonstrate innovative approaches to enhancing model performance and understanding in various domains. In a comprehensive analysis, the authors delve into the impact of similarity sources on model performance, focusing on text encoders and their role in learning similarities. Table 7 presents the performance results of various similarity sources, including ImageNet, Real, Same Class, Mixed, and ObjectNet. The Sentence Transformer, XCLR, emerges as the top-performing method, closely followed by the Clip Text Encoder. The study explores four different graph construction methods, SUPCON, which connects samples of the same class, SIMCLR, connecting augmentations of the same image, a graph inferred by comparing representations of sample captions using different text encoders, and a graph where connection strength is defined by the distance in WordNet hierarchy. A random graph with fully random cross-sample connection strengths is also evaluated. The results show that the sentence transformer graph performs the best, with the clip text encoder achieving good performance as well. Interestingly, using WordNet hierarchy distance did not yield satisfactory results. To visualize learned similarities, the authors encode 100 examples from each class, calculate the Cartesian product, and take the mean over the resulting 10,000 similarities to represent the average learned similarity for a class pair. This visualization is presented in Figure 4.
The authors also evaluate the models trained on CC3M and CC12M using KNN, with results shown in Figure 6. XCLR performs better on CC3M, and comparatively with SimCLR when trained on CC12M. Additionally, the authors provide details on ImageNet 9, specifically the mixed same and mixed rand tasks, which are used to test model robustness to background perturbation. They refer to these tasks together as background decomposition. Finally, the authors provide details on the clip experiments, including training the model from scratch on CC3M and evaluating its performance at 32 and 100 epochs. The results are presented in Table 8. Experiments were conducted on various graphs to evaluate the target and learned similarities for different models. The subcon model's learned similarities are presented in the first table, where diagonal elements represent intraclass similarity and off-diagonal elements represent interclass similarity. Notably, high similarities are observed between felines, cougar, lynx, and tabby, and dogs, Maltese dog, German shepherd, and doberman, while low similarities are seen between these classes and the remaining classes, types of balls and musical instruments. In contrast, the target similarities exhibit perfect intraclass similarity, diagonal elements equals 1, and 0 interclass similarity, off diagonal elements equals 0. Similar patterns are observed in the learned similarities of the clip model, as shown in the subsequent tables. These results demonstrate the ability of both models to capture meaningful relationships between classes, such as the high similarity between felines and dogs. Figure 5 provides a visual representation of the target and learned similarities for different graphs, highlighting the differences between the models. Furthermore, Figure 6 presents the results of models trained on ImageNet, CC3M, and CC12M datasets, evaluated on the ImageNet validation set using a K-nearest neighbors KNN, classifier. The figure shows the accuracy of the models as a function of the KNN value of K indicating that models trained on larger datasets, CC3M and CC12M, outperform the model trained on ImageNet, particularly at higher values of K. These findings provide insight into the performance of different models on various graphs, demonstrating their ability to capture meaningful relationships between classes. The results have implications for the development of more accurate and robust models in computer vision tasks. The authors present the results of training clip on the CC3M dataset, demonstrating that longer training improves performance, but clip struggles with small datasets. Table 8 shows the performance of clip on CC3M, with 100 epochs of training yielding better results than 32 epochs. To further understand the background decomposition method, the authors use histograms to visualize the similarities calculated using sentence transformer on ImageNet in CC3M. Figure 7a reveals that the average similarity is around 0.35 for ImageNet, but much lower for CC3M, indicating that the graph contains less information for CC3M. In Figure 7b, the authors examine the effect of temperature and batch size on the weight assigned to true positive examples. The results show that the true positive probability mass decreases as the batch size increases, and the temperature tau s affects the weight assigned to other samples in the batch. The authors provide additional training details, including the use of the LARS optimizer, ResNet 50, and a twillayer projector with an output dimension of 128. They also describe their method for fetching similarities, which involves pre-computing the similarity matrix for ImageNet and running the text encoder on the full dataset for conceptual captions. Furthermore, the authors explain their evaluation approach for the MIT States dataset involving random splitting of the dataset into two parts for training and evaluation. They also discuss their understanding of the similarities in the dataset, investigating the average cross-sample similarity and the weight assigned to true positive examples.